Miami Hurricanes and Louisville Cardinals go head-to-head -head this Saturday. Which matchups are going to decide this game? You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Shout out to the everydayers, and thank you so much for making this Locked On crossover your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to the Locked On Louisville listeners and viewers, Locked On Canes listeners and viewers. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. We will give our predictions for this weekend. We'll talk about the key matchups that could decide this game for better or for worse. And also want to talk about our, our midseason grades. I'm Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. He is Dalton Pence from Locked On Louisville. So uh, it's six ranked Miami at Louisville, 12 noon in Louisville, Kentucky. And of course, Louisville just snapped a two game losing streak this past weekend against Virginia. But if we look big picture, Dalton, uh, what have been to you the highlights, the, the things that have worked for Louisville so far? Well, the, the, you really have to sort of dive into um, the numbers a little bit to, to sort of seek that out because with how high the expectations were for this team coming into the season, most would likely say that the first six games have been disappointing from a record standpoint. And you are who your record says that you are. I think one thing, however, that Wolf fans do enjoy is that quarterback play is better and that Tyler Shuck seems to be as good as advertised. Now, uh, situational play calling and, and some other factors have hurt this offense overall, but that shouldn't really take away the glamour of what Shuck has been able to bring to the table because he's been making NFL throws every single week. Um, so that portion of things gives Louisville fans a lot of comfort. And you have Isaac Brown, who's starting to make himself into uh, seemingly a, a pretty big star as a freshman. And then not to mention Ja'Cory Brooks has been everything the Cardinals could have wanted and more. So a lot of it, Dono, has been individual play. Um, so that's kind of where things are here. And, and I imagine that when you look at the Miami Hurricanes, 6-0 and is great. Having a Heisman hopeful candidate has to make things even a little bit more sweeter because it's been a little while. Yeah, and Cam Cam Ward uh, from Miami, that's the big highlight. He's been the straw that stirs the drink for that entire football team so far. And, you know, Miami's total offense is number one in the country right now at 400 yards per game. The passing, or that's the passing offense at 400 yards per game, which is number one in the country. They also do have the number one total offense in the country. And, you know, Ward, uh, he's got that gunslinger mentality, Dalton. So every now and then he's, mm -hmm going to make some throws he'd like to have back it you know happen against Cal with a pick six but if sometimes you have to take risks if you have the arm talent of Cam Ward and to make some of the big plays that he makes you know sometimes there are some negatives that come with that but overall he's cut the negative plays way down it's the reason why he's one of the top three favorites for the Heisman Trophy right now I mean at the mid-season mark he's got over 2,200 passing yards and 20 touchdown passes like he's on pace to shatter the team record for single season passing yards which was set way back in 1984 by Bernie Kosar right, so it's, yeah. been, it's been a long time coming for Ward to break yeah. that record and and you know while the uh the, the rushing offense has been a little inconsistent for Miami the passing offense has worked throughout uh Xavier Restrepo Miami's top receiver who's a dangerous weapon in the slot he's having a fantastic year he's on track to break records of his own uh, Isaiah Horton has been a really pleasant surprise at wide receiver. Jacoby George has made some big plays. And you know, another thing that's, that, that's really positive for Miami has been the renaissance of the tight end room. Uh, the tight end room was virtually a non-factor in the passing game last year. And uh, Elijah Arroyo is is having a heck of a season number eight. So it's for, for, for both of these teams, you know, certain aspects of, of the offense is what has really worked so far. I have a feeling we're going to have similar answers for what's not been working so I'll, I'll let you start for the Louisville Cardinals what have been sort of the biggest areas of disappointment thus far well I mean at first it kind of started off as you know this is the first test when, when the Louisville struggled a little bit against Georgia Tech and then Notre Dame 
catastrophic first quarter. Um, people kind of chalk that up as eh, first road game. You get the bad performance out of the way. You still only lost by seven, right? And then SMU comes and some of these same questions aren't getting answered and some of the same concerns stay consistent. And that once again remained for the Virginia game. And yes, you got the win against Virginia, but I think through the first six games, the same issues week two against uh, Jacksonville State were the same issues now leading into Miami. The Cardinals have yet to really find an answer for a mobile quarterback. And I know that Cam Ward isn't necessarily a dual threat guy when you sort of break down the definition, but he's still a player that can improvise and create magic at, at any point by, you know, uh, getting out of the pocket. And the Cardinals have been really poor in uh, first drive defense. I mean, you look back at this four game stretch, each team that they played has essentially walked down the field and scored on their very first drive. And just the, it just doesn't look like there's much juice. And, and I hate to like play the that side of things, but after the loss against Notre Dame, Louisville just didn't look like they had a lot of juice on the sideline. And that, that kind of worries me. It looks like the urgency really isn't there. A lot of this, I don't think it's personnel, Dono. I think a lot of this is coaching. And they're trying to make some tweaks. We saw that against Virginia. But what a hell of a way to have to keep proving tweaks and making them than to have the number six team in the country uh, coming to your to your home stadium. So to answer your question in a very long, unnecessary fashion, it's that the same issues keep popping up every single week. And sometimes it's it's more 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 often than others, but when something else is down, something else is worse. So it's it's just it's evening out and it's hurting the Cardinals and it almost costed Louisville a third straight loss on Saturday. So consistency has been fine. Unfortunately, it's consistent in having these same issues. So long story short, um, that's sort of been the case for the Cardinals. Uh, when I look at this Miami team, Dono, you're six and zero, and it goes without saying it sure beats playing good and having more than one loss. You know, there's some games where you struggle, but if you win the game, that's really all you can say. But I do want to sort of get a little bit critical of the past two games for Miami because you could argue that as much as they won, they very well could have lost. And it took some late game heroics from Cam Ward in both games to come back. Why, why is Miami finding themselves trailing the way that they are in these past two games against seemingly inferior competition. Yeah, there's been uh, some troubling patterns over the past two games, and it's one of those situations where you have to wonder how much of that can get sorted out and fixed during the bye week. Miami is coming off a bye, uh, which they took very seriously. They even had a, a players-only meeting during the bye week uh, because slow starts have been an issue. Now, it's not first drive Miami usually scores on their first drive of the game and then there's usually a lull for the rest of the first half that's been a pattern both against Virginia Tech and against mm -hmm. Cal where they've had to mount fourth quarter double digit comebacks in each of those games in Cal they were down 20 points in the fourth quarter it was it was pretty miraculous the way they were able to come back but you 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 can't do that every game as we know Dalton and so Miami has had several uh defensive lapses um Right. Yeah, and this is an area we'll we'll talk about the matchups in a little bit, but in terms of giving up chunk plays in the passing game, Miami surrendered four passing plays of at least 50 yards against Cal, which is unfathomable that that can happen. And it's unfathomable that you come back and actually win the game yeah. after that. Um, you know, there's been inconsistent coverage breakdowns. Uh, there were a lot of a lot of tackling problems against Virginia Tech, uh, specifically against their top running back, Basial Tootin, which makes me wonder how is Miami going to do when it comes to tackling a guy like Isaac Brown, who's been fantastic in the Louisville backfield. And you know, it, it obviously things have been much better overall on the offensive side of the football, but there still have been some slow starts. You have to wonder if maybe Miami is going to bring out the fourth quarter game plan from the first quarter because the Hurricanes usually will try to uh, establish the running game early on. And then the last couple of weeks, they've, they've had to ditch the running game a little bit to pull off these double-digit comebacks. So it, it makes me wonder if Miami is going to focus on starting a, a little bit faster uh, for a game like this, which uh, I, I think you could argue is the – 
toughest uh, opponent that they played so far, despite the four and two record. So slow starts and a lot of busted coverages on, on defense. And, and it seems like it's more schematic stuff than physical stuff. But again, like with, you know, just an extra week, I wonder how much of that Miami's going to be able to correct. And folks, we're only getting started on this crossover episode because I want to dig into some of those matchups, the matchups that could decide the outcome in this one. Uh, Dalton and I are going to have predictions a little bit later on. So, folks, we got locked on Louisville. We got locked on Canes. You want to keep it locked because we're only getting started on this brand new locked on crossover. And if you're looking for action on this game, FanDuel is your spot. Uh, Hurricanes are actually four and a half point favorites on the road right now at Louisville. So if you like Louisville to pull off the upset or if you like Miami to cover, you can check that out at FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. And NFL fans, season is in full swing. You can start your season with a big return on FanDuel. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play -play, and so much more right on the same page where you place your bets. You get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com, America's number one sports book. Thank you so much for making this Locked On crossover your first listen and your first watch today. Make sure you also check out the Locked On College football channel. Uh, Spencer McLaughlin does a fantastic job. I'm sure he's devoting some time this week to Miami at Louisville, one of the bigger games on the schedule, certainly in the ACC this week. Locked On College football is available free, like this show, wherever you get your podcasts, and free on YouTube. So, um, Dalton, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the floor on this one first. Um, matchup or matchups uh that you think could decide this game in louisville's favor if you guys can exploit these things yeah i think it starts with the offensive side for louisville playing to your strengths offensive line has been an issue but one thing that has sort of um you know hamstrung miami has been giving up the explosive plays and one thing that louisville has been able to do is create those explosive plays especially with a player that a lot of Guys on this Miami team are going to be familiar with uh, with Ja'Cory Brooks, a, a South Florida native. He has been everything that Louisville fans could have asked for and more. It's almost like he led Alabama in receiving touchdowns one season before he got hurt. Um, but I digress. He's he's been fantastic. Um, there really hasn't been able to there really hasn't been a defensive back that has been able to check him one on one this season. Um, that yards after catch availability and it's. About time. Louisville is due for a Colin Lacey breakout game. It's coming eventually, and I desperately hope it happens on Saturday because it hasn't happened in the past couple of games as he's come back from that broken collarbone. So if Louisville is victorious in this game, I think it's because they create the necessary explosive plays, and what better way to do that than with um, the wide receivers that they have, but also extending that to Isaac Brown because he has been a house call waiting to happen when he touches the football, um, you know, this season. So, yeah, it, it's, it's something like uh, Isaac Brown to me and, and Miami's rushing defense uh, is I think number 11, which feels higher than it should be based on some of the big plays that they've given up on, on the ground. Uh, but that he's certainly going to be a bundle to contain. Uh, like for me, uh, uh, honestly, I, I think the matchup that could decide this in, in Miami's favor uh, I'm not going to go necessarily with Cam Ward in the passing game because it's almost a given that they're going to get theirs in just about every game that they play. I'm going to look at Miami's defensive line against Louisville's offensive line because that, to me, um, if Miami can get going from a pass rush and a pressure standpoint, it's going to take a lot of, to use the same word again, it's going to take a lot of pressure away from Miami's defensive backfield. That if, if they can force Tyler Shuck uh, under duress, have to get rid of the football quickly, bring him down a few times. Um, you know, He's actually been good, Shuck, I've noticed, under pressure this year. But his bread and butter is really when he has time to throw in a clean pocket, like most quarterbacks around the country. So, uh, you know, the matchups that Miami's going to have with guys like uh, Ruben Bain, who just made his return for the Cal game, uh, he has extra time to recover through the bye week. You know, Tyler Barron has been a little banged up, but still – playing well. Simeon Barrow in the interior has really come up with some big plays on the defensive line lately. Uh, so I that that to me is what I, I really look at, Dalton, where 
you know, Miami can really make the difference because, again, I expect Miami's offense to be able to score. In fact, I see a lot of scenarios where this game could be a shootout. So I think being able to make a few extra big plays on the defensive side of the football with your pressure from your front seven, because, you know, for I, I talk about Miami having liabilities on the back end. The front seven has has been excellent so far this year. And I think that could be the matchup that decides this football game. Mm -hmm. When you sort of flip it on, like to sort of flip that argument and say what um, what what matchup scares you in a little sense, as you could point to being like, hey, Dono, Miami theoretically lost this game because this position group didn't really play well against this one. What what really comes to mind for you? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's mostly on Miami's defense versus Louisville's offense because you know. Um, Chunk plays like when when Miami faced Cal, Fernando Mendoza only had 11 completions in the game and four of them were for over uh, for over 50 yards. And he had nearly 300 yards passing in just 11 completions, which is yeah. insane. And so right. some of the matchups on the outside, Ja'Cory Brooks is a guy who you know, could really could really give Miami nightmares. And, um, you know, if, if Miami, if they don't tackle the way that they have for most of the year, the tackling has been better against Virginia Tech. They missed, I think, 21 or 22 tackles in that game that they missed. So um, I, I could definitely see a scenario where Isaac Brown could get rolling. And like I, I know and I'd like actually to pick your brain on a couple of the former Miami guys that are on the roster. I haven't seen too much stat wise from from Don Chaney or from Jaleel Skinner, but I feel like if they're if they're going to have some big moments, I feel like this would be the game for the former Miami guys that are on your team. Well, I think that that's I, – I don't I don't necessarily think those two have, have the key games. I think it's just going to be yeah. players that maybe Miami overlooked in the high school recruiting process. Now, they didn't yes. overlook Ja'Cory Brooks. Yeah. Ja'Cory Brooks just yeah. went to play for Nick Saban. That, that does happen, or that did happen, thankfully, past tense. Um, but Isaac Brown, a guy that got overlooked, Stan Quan Clark, another guy that got overlooked. Um, yeah. To the two that you mentioned, Don Chaney has dealt with an ankle injury sort of here and there. But truthfully, he's had the opportunities. Maurice Turner has been banged up, hasn't played in, in about a month. But Isaac Brown has just been that good. And it's unfortunate for Cheney because it feels like Louisville's offense without sort of the, the maulers up front, it's based upon speed and having that vision. And that's what Isaac Brown really brings to the table, whether that's fair to Don or not, that's the reality. And Jaleel, he's just a victim of a really crowded room. Jamari Johnson yeah. is going to be one of the best tight ends in the ACC. I'll say next year, assuming he stays at Louisville. Mark Revin has been really good. Uh, there's just, so many mouths to feed in terms of receiving targets that Skinner just hasn't gotten a ton of opportunities, but I'm going to be a little lazy here. Um, when I look at how Louisville, if Louisville does lose this game, I think it's Ron English, the Louisville defensive coordinator against Miami's offense. Now, because go back to the point that I, that I made earlier, I don't think a lot of this is personnel wise. I think Louisville has really good players. Ashton Gelati, Quincy Riley, yeah. you have some really good players on this defense, but it goes to show you that um, coaching does matter. Scheme matters. Louisville has to do a better job of scheming things up early on. Like opposing offense is scoring four straight games on the opening drive, and it doesn't even look competitive. There's a problem. Uh, tackling technique, there's a problem. Not getting pass rush because you're really not sending as many guys. Again. There's a problem. And then the soft coverage. Don't even really get me started of how I think Xavier Restrepo, Jacoby George, and Isaiah Horton can literally run up to the sticks and turn around untouched because it happens every week. And something has to change. Now, Ron English is calling plays from the field now. Maybe that helps with sort of simplifying things like they've been talking about. But if Louisville loses this game, it's because I feel like, once again, the defense just wasn't really put in the best spot to succeed. And you're going to have to call a phenomenal game to sort of uh, subdue this offense as much as you can. Yeah, and and I, I kind of I glossed over that matchup because you know Ward has been phenomenal regardless uh, of the opponent this year. But it, it's definitely something that I've looked at in terms of Louisville's coverage. Uh, you know, a stat that I 
I heard from Pro Football Focus are is that Louisville has actually missed 30 tackles in coverage this year, which is Yuck. I think fourth worst in Power Four, and uh, and they're I think 70th in in passing yards allowed. So it's it's a, and sometimes college football is unpredictable, and the matchups don't play out the way the way that you think they will. But that that definitely seems like a, a matchup that. Miami can exploit. So I, I, I think that, that that's where Miami is going to, is going to do a lot of damage. But again, like uh, I, I've got concerns over chunk plays that Miami could give up. And, and I guess we'll, we'll talk on the other side about whether, whether we think this is a high scoring shootout type of game, or if this might be uh rebound games for both defenses. So you guys want to keep it locked right here. We're not done yet. We got locked on Louisville. We got locked on Canes big matchup this Saturday. Miami at Louisville, 12 noon on ABC. You want to keep it locked right here on this Locked On crossover. And I already know you're keeping it locked to hymns. Guys, your sex life is important, but your schedule is busy. It is for all of us. You don't have the time to go to a doctor's office and get treated for ED. Through hymns, you can get a personalized ED treatment without stepping foot outside your door. Hims is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. Hims provides access to a range of doctor-trusted ED treatments like chewable mints, Viagra, and Cialis, and their generics for up to 95% cheaper. The process is 100% online, so there's no need for uncomfortable doctor's visits. No insurance is needed, and one low price covers everything from treatments to ongoing care. With hundreds of thousands of trusted subscribers, Hims can help you find the ED option that works for you. Start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash locked on. That's H I M S dot com slash locked on for your personalized ED treatment options. Hymns.com slash locked on. The products mentioned are chewable compounded products, which are not approved or verified for safety effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions will require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety info. Subscription required. Price varies based on products and subscription plan. Thank you so much for making this Locked On crossover episode your first listen and your first watch today. Miami Hurricanes at Louisville Cardinals this Saturday at 12 noon. So, uh, all right, I'm, I'm going to Dalton Pence. I will, I will dust off my prediction first. Um, I, I think we're going to get some points in this game. It might even settle down a little bit in the second half. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go for the reasons we talked about where I, I think Miami's going to be able to get theirs and have pretty consistent success, hopefully start quickly on the offense. I'm going to go with, and I actually have the same score prediction as another Dalton that I had on on Locked on Canes earlier this week, Dalton Wasserman from Pro Football Focus. I'm going to go 38 to 37 Miami, or sorry, 38 to 27 Miami over Louisville this weekend. What do you got? First off, who is the, which Dalton do you enjoy having on more um you know honestly be careful, I, Dono, be careful. no no it, it, it's dalton pence is, is the dalton that i that i enjoy more because it's all we keep oh, it in yeah, the acc family this wasserman guy he's breaking down all the this stays a stat nerd with all this pro football focus stuff i'm team pence all the way you know what also drops today locked on what? acc squad yes a lot of great talk, a lot of great banter, a lot of good Pittsburgh banter. I weird, but go ahead and just just listen to it and you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it really just depends on how much time you got to listen to this because I, I'll try to keep it short. This matchup has all of the ingredients to be an upset. You've got a sold out Cardinal Stadium, so atmosphere check. You have the head coach with the pedigree of pulling off upsets. Jeff Rom has a weird trend of pulling off October upsets. A weirdly, Ooh. like Ohio State, um, Ohio State, Minnesota, and there's another Big Ten team that he defeated at Purdue. So the the pedigree check. You've got the explosiveness on offense check, and you've got an overall really talented team check. And then there's a team that you're going up against that hasn't been all that. Impressive in past weeks, check. But I will say what can happen and what will happen are very different things. Can Louisville win this game? Oh, 100% they can. I think that Louisville has it in them 
to pull out a really good performance because the talent is there. The Cardinals are the best team that Miami will have played up until this point, and they're playing them on the road. This is probably going to be their first – well, I'm not going to say their first hostile environment because you, you can't discredit Gainesville. Very, very good. But first hostile road environment, first hostile environment in, in quite some time. The issue is, is that the same mistakes for Louisville – are preventing my confidence from rising. And if you're asking me if I think Louisville can win, the answer is yes. But with having seen the first six games, I can't look at you with a straight face and be confident in predicting Louisville to win this game without just being an absolute homer because you're just basing it off of the blind optimism that things are just going to absolutely turn in their favor. Could they? 100%. Will they? Not sure. I think it's going to be close. I think the spread is going to be close. I'm going to go Miami 38 and Louisville 31. I think that the Cardinals are going to score some points. I think Miami is also going to score some points. It helps Louisville if it's a high-scoring game. But what Miami did show when they played Virginia Tech and Cal is that if you're playing this Hurricanes team, you have to play a relatively clean game for all four quarters. And right now, I think Louisville can give you two, maybe three really good quarters, but their bad quarters have been bad. So would it surprise me if Saturday at 3.30 p.m. we're talking about a Louisville upset? No. Don't hate me, Louisville fans listening to this. I'm going to predict Miami for the victory. And you know something, just to build on on what you're saying, um, I talked about this a little bit in uh, in a recent episode of Locked on Canes. But between, it might come down to which team has less self sabotage. Because yeah, again, like yeah. despite the fact my, Miami's six and zero, oh, but they came really close to losing each of their yeah. last two games. Uh, way too many turnovers in the Virginia Tech game. Way too many penalties over the past two games. And I, and I know Louisville has has struggled uh, when it comes to shooting themselves in the foot. So honestly, th- this one may come down to which, which team makes one or two fewer mistakes. It, it, this could boil down to that. I, I agree, and I think that that's uh, – Louisville, granted, they, they aren't really turning the ball over much like they did against Notre Dame, but for the most part, the ball security has been fine. It's been the penalties. It's been the broken yeah. coverages, and a lot of that might be to having uh, – a difficult game plan to decipher because you know as well as I do, if your game plan is sort of difficult for the players to understand, even the slightest bit of doubt on your assignment can make thing can make matters really, really bad. And I, I just Cam Ward has been playing at such a high level, and it's it, it's just tough to see Louisville winning this game, or at least let me say this: predicting Louisville to win this game. I think that I would be doing the analytical side of disservice by just saying that Louisville is going to 100% win this game. So don't kill me, Louisville fans, if we do win, because I'm going to be rejoicing and, and eating crow. Um, but I, I think Louisville can win, but I'm not necessarily so sure they will. Yeah, and, and honestly, I no outcome would surprise me, <laughs> despite the fact that I, I made my pick in Miami's favor. So awesome. We appreciate you guys, whether you're watching us and listening to us on Locked on Louisville or Locked on Canes. Hopefully you subscribe to both channels. I mean, if there's any you know Canes uh, people watching and listening to this, make sure you subscribe to Locked on Louisville and vice versa. And let's have a great game. And this is this is a friendly rivalry. And also, before we get out, Howard Schnellenberger trophy on the line. That that's another thing that these schools have in common. That Howard Schnellenberger was was instrumental in both football programs, and I'm I'm glad we get a chance to to honor him. And the winner will take the Schnellenberger Boots trophy. So we will talk to you guys again next time on Locked On Louisville and on Locked On Canes right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. <laughs>